What's happening friends? It's Hunter. Thanks for checking in on the video again today. Brian and I just got done with the house for DR Horton and we have one thing left to finish. And it is a garage rail for the stairs coming in from the garage into the house. If you have three or more stairs, most likely there needs to be a rail on one side for it to meet code. So for this house, we just have one easy wood rail, wood balusters that we need to install here. And then we're gonna be done with our day, but I wanted to bring you guys in and show you how we get this done. We got all the tools out that we need, air gun with some nails, a drill with a Phillips bit. We got our Phillips screws and we got a countersink bit. I'll show you what that guy does here in a little bit. Uh, we got our balusters, we got our rail. So first thing I'm gonna do, and uh, this is pretty much step one guys, and this is marking out the piece for the rail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it flat here on top of the rake of the stairs. I'm gonna push it up towards the drywall. And this is called the brick molding on the outside of the door. You'll normally see this with the front door um, and your garage door. And I've slid it past, I'm still tight to the stringer. I slid it past, I'm just gonna draw a line right there. And that's all I really need. Um, one thing I want you guys to kind of keep in note too is this brick molding. Uh, there is a detail, so there is there is a slight angle going on here. So we're gonna we're gonna account for that the best we can, and it's gonna be shown here to you in just a second. But now that we've we've got our angle that we're looking for, we're gonna head to the saw. This angle does change, so it's off within a couple degrees every once in a while. So yes, doing these all the time, I should know an exact measurement, but laying it down, scribing it out is the best way to do it. So let's head over to the saw real quickly. Lay my piece on the saw. And then since I've got the handy DeWalt with the light, I'm just gonna kinda see my shadow line. And I'm just gonna try to get it as close as I can to the angle, which I'm happy about right there. Lock the saw in. In this case, it looks like we're at 35 and like a quarter degree. So like I said, it could be a 36, it could be a 34, it all changes. Now, the other thing we need to do is we need to cut this at an angle, like I said, on that brick molding, there's a slight angle. So what we do in that degree, we know it's a nine degree. So we've already got our saw locked in at the angle of the rake. We now need to come over here for a compound miter, and I need to move this side over to nine degrees. I like it, tighten the saw, tighten it down. Not too, too tight, but get it snug so it won't move. So now we've got it set at a nine degree bevel right there, or a miter, I apologize, nine degree miter, and it's still locked in at our 35 and a quarter. So now, we are set to make our first cut and we're not going to go from our line we're going to go from the very tip of our piece of material so here we go we're going to get it nice and flush to the saw right to the tip of the material and here we go all right guys we made our first cut and as you can see it's kind of a compound cut right there. So we're gonna walk back over to the stairs. So follow me back over here. Nice and easy, cause it's right back and forth. So the next step, we're gonna lay it back down. Slide it up to the brick mold. And if you can tell with that compound, we've kind of, yeah, I know there's a little bit of gap behind there, but I'm not custom perfectly scribing this piece in, but we've, we've angled it. We've covered a good portion of our gap. I like the angle on both sides. So now I need to hold it tight up to the brick molding and I need to come down here. And I usually, I eyeball an inch and a half past the end of your stringer. I usually eyeball it about an inch and a half. And then we need another mark right here at this point. So after that's done, we head back over to the saw. So come back over to the saw guys. We're gonna lay in it. Lay it back down. Now I need to move the saw back from our last cut back up to a zero, obviously back straight, lock it in. And 
We need to keep the same 35 and a half. Keep that same cut on both sides. So since we're already locked in at 35 and a half, I've come past my eyeball inch and a half roughly. And we're gonna go for another cut. All right, so we just made our our first cut off of our first line and I have this little tick for the point of our stringer. So now on this one, I need to come over to a 54. 54 degree, lock it in. And right at that point on the 54, we're gonna make this cut. And let's just see if my eyeball was pretty close. What do you think, guys? Was I, was I close enough to inch and a half? I think. I think I'm like, <laughs> per the video, per that, what we were just showing there, it's an inch and nine, but I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna take a quick piece of sandpaper out of my pocket here, and I'm just gonna hit these edges real quick because they're sharp from the saw. Okay, so. We've got our first piece marked out, all based off of our string of our stairs. Now this kind of comes to be an important part because this does need to meet code. The inspector will measure this, and if we fail, we're gonna have to redo it. Because the door is sitting back, the stringer isn't coming straight up, and the door isn't right under the angle of the stringer. See how the stringer kind of flattens out and the door sits back. Just Given this condition, it's kind of hard for me to explain it and do the math to show you, but given this condition, we actually have to lift our measurement that we're gonna do over here in order for it to work out eventually on the two points that we're gonna measure later. So, bear with me guys. We're just gonna do 38 and a half right off the bat. And I know this from just doing many of them that we're gonna be safe there. So we got our mark over here and my next step is to get the rail right on our point, right on the edge of the brick molding, and look down below because the brick molding is nice and flush with the stairs. We're gonna get our handrail right nice on the edge of our brick molding. I'm gonna put two shots in. One, two. Try to make sure it's all straightened out nice and flush. I'm gonna get a shot on the side. Maybe one more on this side. All right, so one quick screw needs to go in real fast just so this doesn't go anywhere. And then we're gonna move to our balusters, but we're gonna pull out our handy countersink bit, which has edges that will kind of sink the head of the screw for us. So let's make sure we get one screw nice in the center. Miss the nails. Just push it down a little bit just so it leaves that perfect little hole. That's what the bit is meant to do. It's a countersink bit just for this exact reason. You take your screw, run it in, nice and snug, but it countersinks the screw, doesn't destroy your material. Awesome little, little handy tool. Okay, so now we got our handrail set in place. Let's check our dimensions. I know this was 38 and a half, but our points need to be from the front of the stairs at the bottom and from the front of the stair at the top. So let's check down here below. And I'm just gonna eyeball my tape measure, you know, straight up and down to be the best, you know, I'm eyeballing level on my tape measure. And it looks like we're at about 36 and a half. And guys, that is in code. Code is anywhere from possibly 35 and a half all the way up to 38. So we are at that actually 36 and a half to 36 three quarter mark on the bottom. Come up top, level it up, and can't believe it guys, we had the exact same measurement at on the top as well. Now, if we measured 36 and, and three quarters from here, our rail would be set down low Given the condition right here that I'm saying, the door is set further back than the stringer. Given that condition, we needed to raise this measurement to get, to get this within code. So next step guys, balusters. We've got all of our balusters. Let's walk right over here to the saw again. I'm gonna set them down. 
on all these cuts. This is just how DR likes it. You could leave the balusters square. You can nip the tips of them. You can kind of do whatever. I like to cut two at a time. And it's just a 45 degree cut and it's gonna be right really close to the end. All of them need to be pretty close to the same size. So here we go, guys. I've got six of these to cut. Let's do it. All right, six of them cut all to the same length. And this last baluster, we're gonna take over and we're gonna mark it at the height that we want it. So let's head back over. We're gonna set our balusters up here on the side, just out of the way. And we're gonna come down and we're gonna want our baluster here on the end of the stringer. Nice flush to the end here. Now what I will wanna do though, is I wanna to get out my little, I'll call it my speed level or my torpedo level. And I'm gonna to wanna to get this baluster level just so I can know my perfect height. And I always eyeball this as well, guys. So I like just right here, and it's gonna show just a little half inch reveal all the way up. You'll see as we nail them in. So I got my mark, head back over to the saw. Since I made the mark, since I made that mark that way, I gotta turn the saw back this way. So still a 45 and uh, one cut. All right, back over. Usually put like a little star on that one so I don't mix up the balusters for any reason that they were to fall. All right, first baluster. We're putting it right back into position just as we marked it out here on the bottom. Nice and flush. We're gonna do two shots, one at the bottom, two at the bottom. Get our handy level. And let's make sure we get that bubble in the center of those lines. Kind of takes a second. There it is. We're gonna do another two shots. Two shots, there it is. Now if you could come up this way for me, check this side out, because this was an important deal. You guys saw me add an inch and a half. I eyeballed it down here at the bottom. We've leveled this baluster. Now check this out guys, up here at the top. Inch and a half roughly sticking off the side and we need this to meet code. This piece on your handrail needs to exceed the length of the stringer below. So that inch and a half, pretty much golden. It's perfectly lined up. I'm here, I'm gonna take my shot right now. I'm gonna one more at the bottom here. That one's in position. It's level, we are, we are good. Now, I've pre-cut a piece of casing at three and three quarters. Code for in-between balusters is no larger than four inches. No larger or else you are out of code. Four inches, a possible infant or someone could fall through. So anything smaller than four inches, you'll be passing code. I do three and three quarters. I use a block. We've leveled this first one out. So we're gonna use our block, here we go. Getting this same, just eyeballing the same space. Same two shots at the top. Slide my block down, right down here to the bottom. Two shots at the bottom. guys two inch nails coming out of the gun two shots at the top two shots at the bottom it is pretty solid right now it's been nailed together these are perfectly spaced I'm liking the looks of it right now it looks nice and clean but there's still one more step that we need to do we need to use the countersink guys and I need one screw at the top and two at the bottom so let's countersink them and get them prepped out for the screws holes are drilled out.
careful this sucker is going to be hot. So I always just pop it off and throw it off to the side there. Let's get our Phillips bit. I got my Phillips, got my Phillips screws. So now guys, we just need to put a screw in every hole here. So let's screw this off and get it done. guys we're all screwed off this thing is solid it's it's not going anywhere one screw at the top two at the bottom we got our one up here someone's gonna have to break this thing in order for this thing to come apart um, there is one thing I got right into and had fun like getting to the install and using the saw and it's exciting for me to do that stuff but I forgot one crucial step um, and this is especially for those who are installing these for track homes or people that are doing this kind of in a business level, not necessarily homeowners, but on a, on a business level, we do want our handrail, especially if it's only on one side, three stairs, one side, if it was four stairs, we'd probably be putting another one on the other side because at that height, we're going to need both sides covered. But in this case where it's just one rail on one side, it needs to be so your hand follows up the rail and goes right to the doorknob when you're walking up the stairs. So if you guys are doing this for business, put it on the side with the knob, just like most wall mounts in the house. You guys know, keep them on the same side, make it easy for the homeowner to turn those switches on. Uh, if you guys learned something, hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, just a quick and easy how to. Brian and I are done for the day now, so we get to wrap up kind of all of our tools out here in the garage, get them in the two tundras out there, and then we're headed out for the day. So um, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, we will see you later. Peace.